Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. The FBI issues a warning tonight about children sending money to strangers they meet online because they don't feel they have any other choice. Any child with internet access through a smartphone or another device is at risk and the consequences can be deadly. And the FBI calls this sextortion. Kids are tricked into sending pictures of themselves to someone who then demands money in exchange for not sending the images to others. The agency launching an awareness campaign called Stop Sextortion. Sean Lay live with what the FBI says parents need to know right now. Sean. It's important for all parents to take a moment to listen. We met with the FBI today and they said, look, they are sounding the alarm on this because the cases involving children are mounting up right here in Metro Detroit. Nobody wants to talk about this, right? Your son, your daughter doesn't want to talk about it. It's embarrassing, mortifying if anyone found out, but it's a talk that has to happen. It's truly a matter of life and death. Here's why. Just days ago, 17-year-old Jordan DeMay in Marquette in the UP took his own life after an online predator posed as a girl got Jordan to send compromising photos and videos of himself, then was immediately extorted. The person threatened to send everything to Jordan's friends. The teen sent $300. It wasn't enough. Six hours after Jordan got the chilling threat, the photos went out. Jordan committed suicide. The FBI in Detroit says more than two dozen families, many in Metro Detroit, have now come forward saying their children, too, are being extorted. The person on the other end of that message could be anywhere, could be within the United States, could be overseas. The FBI says boys 13 to 17 are being approached online. In Jordan's case, it was Instagram. They're asked to send sexual images. Then demands are made for money to keep those images from being sent to family and friends. And so the easiest way to prevent victims from becoming victims, right, is to let them know that this is happening. And so our goal in this is to alert parents to have these difficult conversations. So we want to emphasize the child is not the person in trouble, right? It's the perpetrator. That's a very important point from R. Schneider with the FBI who we met with today. But look, the FBI also wants to get the word out, but they also want to go after the people that are doing this, getting into your son or daughter's phone. And they can't do that without the parents help or the kids. They need to hear from you if you think you've become victim or if someone like this has tried to get in contact with your children. Back to you. And Sean, the FBI is working with some important evidence here. Some families, especially locally, have stepped forward, yes, and have screen grabs of these messages where they're coming from. So that is giving uh, the FBI some evidence on at least starting to try to trace back where these people are yeah. coming from. Yeah. All right, Sean. Now to a local four news update. We are learning more tonight about a deadly mobile home fire last month in Lapeer County. The case is being investigated as an arson, homicide and suicide. It happened March 21st at the Victoria Meadows Mobile Home Park in Dryden Township. Investigators say the fire was set intentionally by one of the victims, 39 year old Candace Turton. They say Turton is one of four victims ranging in age from 15 to 87 that died in that fire. A slight uptick in the latest coronavirus numbers for the past week. The state reporting 10,474 new cases and 78 deaths. That's over the past seven days. It's about an average of 1,496 cases per day. That's an increase, we should point out, from 1,104 per day, which was last week. The seven-day average for positive tests is up to 7.8%. We're also awaiting a decision from the Ju Department of Justice after a federal judge in Florida struck down the federal mask mandate for public transportation. The DOJ says it will appeal the ruling only if the CDC says the order is still required for public health. This video now has millions of hits at State Senator Mallory McMorrow's floor speech outraged over fellow Senator Lana Thies's comments in a fundraising email. In that email, Thies calls McMorrow a troll who wants to, as the letter put it, groom and sexualize kindergartners. Mara McDonald downtown now with more and uh, Mara McMorrow's response has drawn now international media attention. And likes and retweets from high profile Democrats like Hillary Rodden Clinton and James Carville. 
I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd District had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. McMorrow's passionate floor speech became an instant hit on Twitter, racking up millions of views and retweets and invitations to appear on MSNBC. I want every child in this state to feel seen, heard, and supported, not marginalized and targeted because they are not straight, white, and Christian. It's in response to a fundraising email sent by Senator Lana Tice, a Brighton Republican, who used this language, quote, these are the people we are up against, progressive social media trolls like Senator Mallory McMurrow, D. Snowflake, who are outraged they can't teach, can't groom, and sexualize kindergartners or that eight-year-olds are responsible for slavery. Tice, who is the chair of the Senate Education Committee, is a conservative Republican who is facing a primary challenge from a Trump-endorsed candidate. Senator Tice has not responded on camera to Senator McMorrow's floor speech, but she did release this statement on Twitter this afternoon, saying in part, Senator McMorrow is not naive about politics and fundraising. I know that because it took her mere minutes to turn her Senate floor speech into a plea for campaign donations. That floor speech has certainly raised Senator McMorrow's national profile, and she did have a pretty great fundraising haul, more than six figures. We're downtown. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara, we have managed to climb to more spring-like temperatures, <laughs> but of course it comes with rain. Well, it beats the snow. It sure does. Monday, it's a step it? up. Yeah, yeah Paul. Wasn't that snow something a couple of days ago? <laughs> yeah. You know, a viewer emailed me and said that snow after April 1st, we should not even use the term snow. We should call it high visibility rain. I like that, actually. I like that a lot. So no high visibility rain in uh, today's forecast. We just have some showers that have already moved into Metro Airport where it's 51 degrees. Uh, southeast uh, to south winds are gusting to 20 miles per hour. All right, here's Storm Tracker 4. Uh, a lot of us to the northeastern half of the area are all you know, kind of wondering what's all the commotion about, but we do have some raindrops here down to the south and west. And one thing to notice here, as we continue to look down to the southwest, there's not a whole lot going on here. So once this little band here gets through the area here, we're going to see things kind of start to kind of settle down for a bit of a break and then the main event comes in around midnight to 2 a.m. and we'll show you that timetable coming up in just a few moments uh, a few minutes all right temperatures though slowly falling into the mid 40s during the evening hours with those light showers around and then the temps start coming up toward morning so we will have a complete timetable on the rain and talk about those 70s and maybe some near 80 degree temperatures coming in this weekend see you in a few all right, Paul, the survivors of abuse by Larry Nass are filing 13 claims against the FBI. They claim the Bureau was grossly negligent in its investigation into Nassar's sex abuse. An inspector general report found Indianapolis FBI officials made false statements and also failed to respond for months to early allegations. The Justice Department originally decided not to prosecute the FBI agents, but last year reopened the case. We're going to learn more about the claims being filed tomorrow morning. The longtime driver of the Zamboni for Red Wings games, Al Sabatka, is suing the team, claiming he was wrongly fired. Sabatka was let go February 17th. He says because of a medical condition, he urinated into a drain at the LCA while working. He didn't think anyone saw him, but a co-worker did, turned him in, and he was fired. Sabatka started working for the team when he was 17. He was a fan favorite for decades, swinging that octopus above his head. The lawsuit claims Sabatka was discriminated uh, against based on his age. Sabatka says he's crushed. It's like a bomb dropped on you that... Every morning you get up, you have nowhere to go now. You know, before you get there by eight or before six different days, whatever it was. Now you just like mope around the house. Al making those comments to Bernie. No comments so far on the lawsuit from Olympia Entertainment. We'll hear more from Al Sabatka when Bernie joins us coming up in sports. The World Health Organization has issued a global alert to be on the lookout for mysterious cases of hepatitis occurring in children. The CDC currently investigating nine cases in children under the age of six in Alabama. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with the latest on what could be responsible and also what parents need to know. Doc? Yes, yeah, Sandra. So I realize in this age of COVID, people might want to try to leap to the conclusion that it's related, but that actually does not seem to be the situation. Some of the cases have actually been quite severe, particularly in the United Kingdom, where six children have required liver transplants.
This is the notice from the World Health Organization indicating that 74 cases of hepatitis, which is a serious inflammation of the liver, had been identified in the United Kingdom. Now, importantly, none of them were from any of the hepatitis viruses that we more commonly see, like hepatitis A, B, or C, and currently the exact cause is unknown. A similar severe hepatitis has also been identified in Spain with three cases, 12 cases in Israel, and additional cases in Denmark and the Netherlands. Here in the U.S., so far nine cases have been identified in Alabama. Now, while the exact cause is currently unknown, a leading theory is that it might be due to an adenovirus, which is typically associated with the common cold or even a viral gastroenteritis with vomiting and diarrhea. Up to half of the children in the UK and all of the children in Alabama did test positive for adenovirus. This recently published paper describing 13 cases in Scotland, all but one under six years old, theorizes that the adenovirus may be more severely impacting young children who are immunologically naive because of restricted social mixing during the COVID-19 pandemic. Other infections are being investigated, including a possible but less likely link to the virus that causes COVID, particularly the BA2 strain that is currently dominant in most of the world. Now, currently, there haven't been any cases identified in any other part of the U.S. outside of Alabama, but health officials are on the lookout. Now, some signs of hepatitis in a child include fever, nausea, vomiting, followed by a yellowing of the whites of their eyes or their skin and extremely dark urine. The bottom line here is, at this point, this is something to be aware of, but nothing to be extremely concerned about. Back to you. All right, thanks, Doc. Attorney General Dana Nessel and Consumers Energy reached an agreement on a settlement that will see consumers end its use of coal in Michigan in 2025. Proposed settlement still subject to final approval by the Michigan Public Service Commission, but once approved, consumers will end its use of coal 15 years earlier than originally planned. According to consumers, it'll be one of the first utilities in the country to end its use of coal.